Hey there, it's another great day for a great day. My name is Mark. I'm glad you're here with me. We're going to go check out a place today that has a lot of good food to eat under one roof. It's called the Marietta Square Market. It goes by other names, but I, I like to call it the Marietta Square Market. <laughs> Marietta Square Food and Hall or Consortium or of America. <laughs> what is the name of this place? What is it again? Marietta. The Marietta Food Market. And why are we going to? It's the Marietta Food Square. What is it? Where? What is the name of this place? But it does say Food Hall. Marietta Food Square today. And I, it's not Marietta Food Square. What is, what? Marietta Square Market. Is that it? So come on, let's go. Let's get some something. Let's get something, something. <laughs> <laughs>
plump and moist. Will not overcook. That's easy to overcook shrimp. I can't wait to bite down on this thing and see how good it is. The breading is really light as well. It's not a heavy breading. It's um, it's almost like a, just like when you drag uh, fish through cornmeal, but this is not just cornmeal. There's flour in here too. Anyway, let's see what we got. That's good. I'll give them two thumbs up on this. This is a good po' boy. Mm. Wow. The thing that I love about this is where do you go to get New Orleans food? I actually have had some family members in New Orleans. And once you've had the food there, a lot of people say they cook Cajun food, and they do. But there's something about it. It just tastes great in New Orleans. Do you think it's ambiance? I think it's more than ambiance. I first ate there in New Orleans, I think in the mid 80s, and was blown away. It's just like an explosion of flavor, which really, because of the cultural mix there, it's truly a melting pot and just fantastic. Everybody brings their thing to the table. I mean, think about it. gumbo. I mean, what a mix, right? And yet, if you've had good gumbo, whew, it's something to behold and it'll warm you up. Mm. There's no doubt it's sloppy. So Bourbon Street was given that name, I think like at the end of the 1600s, like 1690 or something like that, by the French head of the city. And he named it after the aristocracy from France, the House of Bourbon, which kind of maybe tells you a little bit about what's going on in that house. But in any event, that's how Bourbon Street got its name. It was paying, paying proper respects to the House of Bourbon. And then, about, I don't know, 70 years later maybe, the Spanish took over and a little bit after that, it burned. But when they rebuilt it, it was like 80% of it burned. And when they rebuilt it, since Spain was in control, guess what most of it looks like architecturally? Spanish. So that's why New Orleans kind of looks that way. And then with the Louisiana Purchase, the U.S. took it over, and it's what we know today, which really in the 70s and 80s, they started cleaning it up. 13 blocks, Bourbon Street's like 13 blocks. And let's face it, it's a port town. It's where everybody goes to have fun. If you're a history buff, you'll want to check it out. A lot of good stuff to see about that place. I'm thinking maybe we'll have to try out some other restaurants. So, if you've been here and you know one that you really don't like or do like, tell me below. I'd love to know. Have you ever had a po' boy? If you have, have never had a real po' boy, tell, tell me below. I'd like to know. I'd be curious. It's one of those types of foods that it's really hard to find a good one. And it's even hard to find anyone that makes them because it's really a different kind of sandwich. So Boudreaux loved to fish. He died while he was fishing. His wife needed to post it. It was Cajun. She's going to take care of business. Keep on moving with life. So she goes to the paper and posts, Boudreaux died while fishing. And the newspaper guy said, well, you know, you could put a little more than that. I mean, she didn't want to pay extra, but he said, you, you got a few more lines if you want to put, add something extra. So she thought about it, marked it up, gave it back to him. And the next day it read, Boudreaux died while fishing, boat for sale. On a scale of one to five, I'd give it a four and a half. Mm. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I can do no more damage to the po' boy.
I think perhaps I'll start with the mini beignet. Very satisfying. These are good. Man, man. If you've never had a beignet, it's like a donut pastry with powdered sugar over the top. So, and when they're hot, it sticks. Are you doing slow mo? No. Okay. No. I was thinking this is our third beignet on the channel. This is our third beignet? Yeah, because we had one at the nest. Mm. Wow. Well, here it is on the inside. Then we had them at Flatlands. Oh, we did. Ooh. Now you know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be candid with you. So the flavor is delicious, the batter tastes right, but it's a little dense to me. And I do not mean stupid like dense. <laughs> I mean, dense like heavy. I like the fluffy beignet. I like the pillowy, billowy beignet. Um, this, you can even sort of see, you know, that it's it's more almost like a roll texture. It looks good though, I'm not gonna lie. But it is good. I'm gonna share one with my producer here. Hmm. But I will tell you with a cup of coffee, this will go down easy. The flavor is like a donut. I'm down to my last beignet, so I want to thank you for watching and hanging out today. Be sure to click like and subscribe and tell a friend. We're heading towards a thousand because of your support. I really appreciate that. And you may have an interest in this video. And I'll remind you what I always remind you. Life is short, so enjoy every meal.